Skyline Drive, Canyon City, Colorado. Hogback. Get to what a hogback is in a minute. It's just the opening scene here. So Skyline Drive is this little one-lane road closed I think for the winter or at least while it's icy and snowy sensibly and it goes up this this ridge which is mostly at least at the top comprised of those Dakota group sandstones and apparently mudstones but this feature here is a nice little stream channel incision so as I mentioned recently a few moments ago Skyline Drive traverses the Dakota Hogback. Now, a hogback is basically just a hill, but the slope of the hill is parallel to the layering that comprises the hill. So, obviously, things get laid down flat. And at some point, tectonic forces warp it up. And so we make this ridge long after everything else erodes away. We have this sort of razor backed ridge isolated from neighboring mountains. Go up the ridge. I actually closed the road so I had to walk up this a good mile and a half. Good exercise. But here, this shows you all you need to know. The slope of the hill is the top of the layering within the hill. And that defines the hogback. I'm not a pervert, I'm just out of breath and high elevation. <sighs> okay, so why did I walk up all this way from all the way down there? Nope, I'm not going near that. Why did I come all this way? Did I just come all this way to see layers dipping? Did I come all this way to see a tectonic ridge, hogback, whatever you want to call it? Did I come up here to see this near shore alternating fluctuating water level deposit from the Cretaceous? Well, yeah, I did. Oh, look at that. Concretions. Super cool. But really the star of this excursion is right here. These are casts of dinosaur footprints. So you remember that up is that way as the hill got warped. So the layer containing the footprints is gone, broken, washed away, and what we have left are casts of dinosaur footprints. So the footprints would have been buried by this, uh, what looks like a muddy sandstone layer, and 
filled in the voids left by the imprints of these big lizard bird whatever they are and there's just they're they're plentiful look at that in context they are exposed along the crest of this ridge and there's actually a sign to talk about them I'll let you Pause it and read it if you like. I don't need a sign. I know everything. Right. And there they go up there. Just a uh, mosh pit of ankylosaurus type dinosaur tracks I mean that is cool I am nerding out hardcore I've got the tripod I'm gonna get some stills I'm probably going to photograph every single one of them I don't know when I'm ever going to pass through this way again. I'm on my way to Brighton, Colorado. I came in two hours out of my way. Round trip to get here. And let's see what I come up with in still pictures. Once again, Skyline Drive, Canyon City. Colorado dinosaur tracks on a hogback dinosaur track on a hogback dinosaur track on a hogback see skills all right see what I come up with you can see where they these were discovered and they were kind of excavated a little bit or gently nudged out of their host Formation. See all the chipping in that. In there, yeah, they totally worked this site. This is, I think it was well known that they were up here, but they really expanded it in the 90s. This is a really good one toes sort of almost a sort of remnant of where his or her toe dug in there this is a good one <clears throat> so like I said we're in that uh, Dakota group formation. This is, I think this is Upper Cretaceous, this section at least. Someone will have to look up when the Ankylosaurus was alive and let me know. But once again, an inland sea ruled this area. And it would fluctuate. It would rise and it would fall. There would be beaches. Tidal areas. They would be coastal lagoons and then water would retreat again and somewhere near the shore, perhaps on a highly vegetated shoreline. These guys were just walking around looking for food, maybe looking for a mate. Like what I do, well, what I used to do. Shh. Uh, the cool thing about the Ankylosaurus was uh, it's kind of it's kind of built like a tank. This big wrecking ball for a tail. I wish they would show the tail on this guy. 
And there obviously there are several subspecies or parallel species of it. I don't know biology. I don't really know much of anything. But I knew, do know higher energy depositional systems such as what would create these gravel lenses not unlike the ones we saw in El Malpace yesterday. Oh, look at that one. Toes. I love your toes. I love your toes. <laughs> My, this reminds me of a story from my ex-wife. She, when she was dating, after we split up, she said she met some guy that just wanted to see her toe. <laughs> As, we're out of geology now, into something else. More sweeping look. By the way, this site was recommended to me by fellow Instagrammer. Uh, by the name of Melanie, I'll try to remember to acknowledge that when I get around to posting this. Super appreciate it. It's why I'm doing what I'm doing on there. I'm networking with some great people. I may not get the amount of followers that butts get, but. I'm enjoying it. I'm seeing cool things. I'm meeting cool people. And dinosaur footprints. Skyline Drive, Canyon City, Colorado. Check you later. One more thing. Just one. I just <clears throat> loving this feature. This alternating mud stone really friable and then these harder harder hard laminar uh, rippled sandstones so some alternating uh, environment action going on here. Let's turn that down a little. Give you some contrast. There you go. Really cool stuff. Speculating that this was this could be uh this could be a meandering river channel formation of an oxbow lake the inner and outer portion of the bend is alternating this could be periodic changes in environment muddy mud pits followed by storm surge runoff maybe but the the energy here definitely alternated and that's the crux of it and i gotta go Still have two and a half hours to drive, so check you later. So I thought I would give you a bit of uh, context here for Skyline Drive. Now this is a one-way street, which makes sense when you look at how narrow it is. Uh, you come up from uh, Highway 50 down below. Here is Canyon City. 
There's Lincoln Park. I'm about to break or something. Yeah. And the hogback, as you can see, creates this ridge, which is part of a uh, uh, a warped up uh, fold. The apex of the fold has been worn away. And only in this one little area right here will you see actual dinosaur tracks. So up here, at least up here, you have that Dakota formation, uh, upper Cretaceous sandstones, sandy gravels with odd shales and what have you. So that's that. That is the Dakota Hogback flanking Canyon City. Now let's jump into it. Okay, so when I was here, it was, uh, I basically drove through all of that. That was a pretty decent snowstorm that started down in uh, New Mexico and covered all the way up to here. This is the northern extent of it. And here's Canyon City down here and here is the crest of this Dakota Hogback. Now once again you take a hundred pictures but you tend to keep three to ten if you're lucky. So I'm going to try to work through one of these pretty quick. I know this video kind of dragged on a bit. And these are actually somewhat of a challenge to deal with. You've got these uh, lighter colored silty sandstones. And you've got some pretty decent shadow going on there. I don't, I don't even know what to make of this one. But maybe that one. Maybe, you know what? Maybe this one will be the one. So let's, let's just play with it and see what happens. We're a little bit off center. So perhaps thinking with Instagram in mind, I can kind of crop that down a bit center it. There you go. I don't know what that stripe is. I'm gonna get rid of that. I have no idea what that is. Okay, so I like my exposure. I like my temperature. I'm gonna nudge this around a bit. See if we can pull out some of that varnish, this chemical uh, weathering that exists on it. Got a nice little red patch there. And gonna play with these highlights a bit. Let me give myself a nice bright image. This is what I want. Nice and bright, but not too bright. Don't want to blow it out. Play with these dark tones. I want a good bit of contrast there. Texture, I'm only going up to five. I mean, look, this whole thing is textured. See, this was shot at f8, 1 over 800, you know, I'm in full sun. It's a light colored rock. There's a little bit of uh, coloring here, but nothing outrageous. I don't really think I even need too much uh, vibrance. I'm going to keep that at number 10.
I actually turned down the saturation. Go to negative 14, and I'm gonna I'm gonna play with the colors individually. That's what I like to do. However, uh, first I'm going to do my best not to forget to edit the curves here a bit. Now that just kind of looks uh, evil. So I do want to tone down on these whites a little bit, but not crazy. I'm going to kick up the darks, but not too much because it'll just look flat if I keep do doing that. So I think that's a decent uh, value. Just keep it right there, not far from the center. Now if I pull this down, I lose it all. If I pull it up, it's all flat. Just got to keep finding these comfortable contrast regions. I think I am okay there. So we have colors to work through. Let's see. I've got my orange. I've got my saturation. I've got my luminance. I'm going to turn down the luminance on my orange. And I'm going to actually turn up on yellow. Because so that gives it this sort of, uh, you know, visible range, visible uh, texture and contrast that you can manipulate. Now if I you see how I do the same thing with red and only that little patch is affected, I don't want to make it unrealistic so I think uh, keep it right there. I'm going to uh, Keep the yellow right there. And I think what I'm going to do is because you have these tremendous, you know, even though this obviously this part of the outcrop where they chipped away material to reveal these tracks, you know, it's a lighter color because it's fresher, it's not as weathered. But uh, it's still <clears throat> it's still pretty bright uh, by contrast to this. So I think what I'm going to do is use my brush. Now I've got my auto mask selected and I'm just going to show mask overlay. I'm just going to paint in this area right here. Now that shouldn't be happening. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the edges of this uh, this uh, footprint cast going to mask it all and I think the only thing I really uh, want to do with that is turn down the exposure right there so now as you can see you have more of a uh, uh, a feature or an outline of this thing because I mean let's face it it blends in the only thing uh, giving you the recognition that this is a dinosaur footprint is that it 
it is shaped sort of like one. Uh, this guy probably stepped, slid forward a little bit into the mud that he was walking on, but you want this to kind of stand out in a photograph, so. Just gonna dial that exposure down just a little bit. And I'm going to experiment a little bit with uh, saturation. So I'm going to bring up the saturation on it. Without it, this is what you're looking at. But this enables me to sort of play this game of exposure, outlining, but keeping it sort of realistic. So I'm going to keep it right there. So now we have this three, all of a sudden it's three dimensional looking. We have it popping out at us. And I think that is because I manipulated the outlines of it. I took away that sunlight blowout and I think we can move on. I don't really want to mess with the dehazer. Don't think we need it. Clarity just kind of makes it unrealistic looking, but I'm going to give it a good value of seven. And it gives us a little bit more. Hey, it's a footprint feeling and my profile file correction make it more in line with reality okay I think I'm done here I'll show you a few more that I've already worked on work through this the focus stacked image Background is in focus, foreground is in focus. Here's a focus stacked panorama. Got my background in focus here. Got my foreground, got these lichens. Now you see there's still a bit of softness here, but when you look here, it's uh, it never comes out perfectly, but it comes out good enough, I think. Obviously, the feature of this area is the dinosaur tracks. That's what I came for. And there are just plenty of them. thing I noticed later on is these okay so these are casts of dinosaur tracks and so in addition to that we have some casts of uh, these sort of uh, asymmetrical or so actually symmetrical ripples they look fairly symmetrical to me just wave action. Uh, in other words, this didn't last long. Uh, it would appear that the sea level dropped. This was a near shore environment. Sea level came back up and we had shallow water. We have a little bit of waves rocking back and forth. And time and life just kept going on in the Cretaceous. So, all right. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, these will be a work in progress going forward. All right. Check you later.